Before we start this video, it's worth pointing out that as our channel grows, we're gaining the attention of scam accounts. We're doing our best to moderate these comments, but again, I want to remind everyone that we will never ask you to text us or call us to win a prize. If you're enjoying the content, we'd be honored to have your subscription and leave a like and a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Now, back to the content. Now, we're sighting in on historic firearms at the National Firearms Museum outside Washington, D.C. It's the NRA's incredible collection of the guns of our history. Sighting in with Shooting USA. The guns, the gear, and the information to get you on target. If you have an interest in firearms, chances are good you've started to collect something. Well, in my case, it's service rifles. I don't need them, I just like them. And they do look nice here on the wall. Well, in the case of the NRA, they definitely have an interest in firearms, and the NRA has also collected over the years to create an extraordinary museum telling the story of America through the firearms of the past. The National Rifle Association's headquarters is on the edge of metropolitan Washington, D.C., just off Interstate 66 in Fairfax, Virginia. The NRA's National Firearms Museum is on the ground floor, and it is one of the world's most outstanding private collections. Over 2,000 rare and historic guns are on display here, each of them a direct connection to our history and our heritage. You can see the beginnings of America's firearms industry in one of Samuel Colt's very first revolvers, a holster model Colt Patterson with a folding trigger made around 1839. Some of his earliest guns, this is serial number three, he gave away as presents to folks that he thought could uh, wield a little bit of influence in getting future military contracts. Another Colt design was not so successful, the model 1839 carbine, one of the few early rifles that Colt made before deciding to stick with handguns, at least for a while. Or you can approach Western history from another direction with a trapdoor Springfield Army rifle, model 1868, that Lakota Chief Kicking Bear carried at Wounded Knee and possibly at the Little Bighorn. Every piece in the museum is historic, but not all of them are antiques. New York police officer Walter Weaver's Smith & Wesson revolver is a scorched and twisted relic of 9-11. This particular stainless steel Smith & Wesson was his backup revolver. It's a gun that they found later in the rubble at Ground Zero. Whether it's a modern pistol like this Ruger Standard 22 serial number 1 million, or a French crossbow nearly 700 years old, everything on display in this museum was present when history was made. Middle school teacher Scott Seagraves brings his eighth graders here from Georgia every year to experience that connection firsthand. It kind of makes history real, I guess. And then, uh, you know, all the way up through Vietnam and, and the Desert Storm and, and those kinds of things, they get to see actual weapons and, and you know, that are part of history. All these old guns and just takes you back to the history of what like, we learned in social studies and all the Civil War, just we'll need to see the guns they used. The museum is a proud celebration of history and freedom, of America's story told through the guns which helped build our country in the past and help keep it secure today. Each one of these guns can tell a different story. With 2,000 plus guns on display, there's a lot of listening that a visitor can do as they come through the galleries. The National Firearms Museum has been built through the support of NRA members and friends. The museum purchased only eight of the more than 2,000 guns on display. A couple of dozen more are on loan, but over 99% of the guns here came to the museum as gifts from donors who share the NRA's interest in freedom, patriotism, and responsibility. 
and that support has helped make this one of the world's most valuable and most interesting firearms collections. Whether you're a visiting 8th grader or a retired admiral with 33 years of service. You've read stories all through the years, or at least I have in all of my life, of, uh, of most of these people that are here and the things they've done, and uh, then to come and see the actual weapons they use. It's just a dream come true. If you love the uh, arms of any sort, why, this is, this is the place to come. There is no other museum quite like this one, preserving and explaining history and heritage from a shooter's point of view. The National Firearms Museum is an important destination for visitors who appreciate how guns and the freedom to use them have shaped our history and culture. And it's equally important for those who are just learning. The National Firearms Museum, a great experience for gun enthusiasts of all ages. And we've got more coming up, the truly priceless guns from history and famous guns from Hollywood. You are siding in with Shooting USA. The NRA's National Firearms Museum is not just a collection of rare guns. Uh, while there are pieces in the collection that are literally priceless, the museum curators have done an extraordinary job of showing how firearms have contributed to our culture through 500 years of American history, and then making an understanding of that history available to NRA members and the public. Come in and shoot for fun. That's what the sign on this genuine Coney Island shooting gallery said nearly a hundred years ago when shooters would go after these targets with pump and lever action 22 rifles. We don't have just guns, we have shooting medals, we have boxes, holsters. We tell the whole story of uh, Americans and their guns. And that story, as it's told here, begins in the very earliest days of our nation with a gun that came over on the Mayflower. It belonged to John Alden, leader of the Pilgrims. The Mayflower gun is about 450 years old and is literally priceless. This is such a powerful piece of our national heritage that trying to describe its value in dollars and cents just wouldn't be right. But not all of the history here is quite so serious. You can see guns that belong to Annie Oakley, the shooting legend of the Old West. She was an amazing uh, shot with rifle, pistol, or shotgun. But this was her favorite rifle. It's a little Remington Beals 32 caliber, a single shot. And you can see how Buffalo Bill's Wild West show helped make the cowboy a symbol of America around the world. And where there's cowboy history, you'll also find cowboy movies. Lynn McAdam says he's going to shoot a hole through this here postage stamp. Are you ready? Uh-huh. The winner! That didn't just happen in Hollywood. Exhibition shooter Walter Groff hit 26 in a row that way, back in 1937. Square in the middle of the first target and working his way out to the edge of the last one, just to make it a little more interesting. And Groff's mentor, Ed McGivern from Montana, really was the fastest gun in the West. He could fire five rounds from a 38 revolver in two-fifths of a second and put them all in the black, a feat that would stand until Jerry Michlack's new world record in 2003. There was a time not all that long ago when young boys dreamed of shooting like that, when westerns were the highest rated shows on television and a junior cowboy's bunkhouse probably had a 22 on the wall and a Red Rider BB gun somewhere close by. Daisy has sold over 9 million Red Riders, beginning with the very first Daisy prototype handmade in 1888. BB guns and cowboy movies are the kind of history that many of us can remember firsthand. I guess what I really relate firearms to is the history of way, the way uh, the country has developed and the, the way the guns have developed with the history. 
Many of these guns were present when history was made. President Andrew Jackson was shot with one of these dueling pistols in 1813. Old Hickory also got off a shot, but missed. And while we're talking about shootouts... Oh! Dirty Harry's gun is here too. The Smith & Wesson from the world's most quoted movie line. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You do have to ask yourself if it, uh, you might have fired five shots or six. <laughs> that famous Model 29 is here, on loan from one of the movie's writers, given to him by Clint Eastwood. Some of the museum's guns would be notable even without their famous owners. An early 19th century double flintlock shotgun with this kind of workmanship is a rare piece in any collection. But this one was a gift from Napoleon to one of his generals, who never won another battle after he received it. General Douglas MacArthur's 32 caliber Colt is a relic of a rather more successful military career. And the marks of use on General and later President Dwight Eisenhower's personal bird gun show that he was a hunter as well as a soldier. It's a gun that's been uh, used quite a bit. It's uh, seen a lot of service in the field. And other presidents are represented here. Teddy Roosevelt's personal hunting rifle is a handcrafted double gun chambered in 450 cordite. Truly a presidential big gun. If you uh, were carrying this, you could truly say that you were carrying a big stick. And if that's not big enough, how about the four-bore black powder elephant gun that belonged to African explorer Henry Morton Stanley? This is the one you've seen before on Shooting USA that sold at auction for a quarter of a million dollars to a wealthy collector who gave it to the museum. There are many guns like that in the National Firearms Museum. Guns which would cost six to even seven figures if you could buy them at all. But what is really important here cannot be purchased at any price. Everything on display is a direct link to the freedoms our country is built upon and to the bravery and sacrifice which have kept our nation strong. The National Firearms Museum may appear to be about guns, but look deeper and it is really about who we are. You're seeing an evolution in arms, an evolution in society. You're seeing what that society does. Pieces that we have in the museum tell that story of Americans and their guns. And within these cases, you see the story of firearms, freedom, and the American experience. If you're planning a visit to the Washington, D.C. area, you owe it to yourself to see the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia. And if you want more information on visiting hours, we've got the information posted for you at shootingusa.com. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you're interested in full length current episodes of Shooting USA, there's a link in the video description to our Vimeo channel. A couple bucks a month gets you access to more than 60 episodes and premieres are added the morning after they debut on Outdoor Channel.